Welcome to That Guy Talks Movies. I am That Guy Talking Movies. And on this episode, highly anticipated episode, well, highly anticipated for me for doing this episode because I have been highly anticipating seeing the film we're going to talk about in this video, which is Dune Part 2. We're going to get right to it. I'm not going to do any intro or anything fancy. I'll simply say if you're new to the channel, you've not subscribed and you want to subscribe and go ahead and hit the subscribe button now to my faithful followers and people who subscribed already who stick with me. Appreciate y'all. Let's get into it. All right. So a couple of things I want to get out of the way. This is what film like this is what movie going is. This is what it's all about. The anticipation, the buildup, especially because this is a continuation of a story. This is the part two, so it's that sequel, and you can't wait to see it after you know after the first one. If you've seen Dune Part One, I hope you did. If you did not, check my review for that also on this channel. But this is what it's all about. That that excitement of going to the theater. I got tickets for this to see it in the one of the only. There's only 19 true IMAX screens in this country, in the United States. There's, I believe, 30 worldwide. There's only 19 in the United States. One of them happens to be in New York here, uh, and it's on 68th Street and Broadway. So I got tickets to see that, and I saw it at 8.30 in the morning. 8.30 in the morning. No popcorn, no Twizzlers. I just I just couldn't see, bring myself to do that at 8.30 in the morning. So I just sat there with a bottle of water, and I enjoyed the hell out of this film. But that is the way it's meant to be seen. So I'm just going to stress and start now by saying, uh, or, or emphasizing at the beginning of this video that if you're going to see this movie, try to get to an IMAX screen and see it, a real IMAX screen, see if it's playing near you. If you're lucky enough to be in a city that has one, that is the way to see it. The scope, the scale, the way this thing looks, the way the screen is, it's just insane. And it just made for an incredible experience. So let's get into that right now. This was magnificent. And I just, there's one more little tiny thing I want to preface before I get into this. At some point in the world, because I, I couldn't help but think about this during the entire movie. At some point, there's going to be a story or a movie or a story that's made into a movie about someone who's selected or prophesized to be the chosen one, the one, the golden child, whatever. It's going to be the, the person, the, the Neo figure, this kind of guy, whatever, the Messiah. And it's, when they're told that that's the case, they're going to embrace it. They're not going to reject it. They're not going to fight it. They're going to be like, really? I'm the chosen one? When can we start? Let's go. Like, that's going to happen. I couldn't help think that throughout this whole film because for reasons why we'll get into in a second. But let, let's talk about how incredible this film was, starting with the cinematography and the look of the film. This again, is what filmmaking and going to the movies is all about. These big, huge pictures, these incredible shots by Greg Frazier, a cinematographer brought back once again, Denis Villeneuve doing his thing on part two. This guy has established himself as probably one of the greatest filmmakers, you know, definitely in this generation, uh, and definitely handling sci-fi material. I was a huge Blade Runner uh, 2049 fan, um, and I think I had expectations with that and and, and sort of a little bit of anxiety because I'm a huge original Blade Runner fan with Ridley Scott. And I didn't think it was possible to do a follow-up to that and to maintain that world or maintain that look and that feel of that world. And Denis Villeneuve proved that he could. And once again, with the world of Dune, outside of Greg Frazier's just holy shit, look at that shot, uh, cinematography, the world building here, the way the entire atmosphere feels everything just feels as if it's not just patched together and it's kind of like whatever they built a world they built a something here something tangible it, it it seems like it exists somewhere and that is really what makes it, it has depth the costume design here the uniforms the layers of religion and politics and the, the, which serve as the backdrop for this entire story uh, from the books you know through is just so deep that when you're sitting there, you know, I could probably sit there for four, five, six hours and just get so lost in it. You kind of just go deeper and deeper and deeper into it. That's how good this is. Production design, the shots, the special effects. This is like filmmaking at its highest. I just, I, I can't imagine it getting much better. That's how incredible this is. The actual story, what, what I'm going to do is, first of all, there's not going to be any spoilers here, but what I want to put up front is, I'm not going to say anything about the whole, you know, Frank Herbert's, the original book versus the film. I don't want to do that. That's like for another video or for someone else to do an analysis or, you know, a comparison to what was left out, which was not. If you're an actual person who knows the Dune stories and you've read the actual Frank Herbert books, you'll know what was left out or what was done different and how it was done. To me, it doesn't really matter. They've 
he has tackled the material and the themes of it all just the right way. So to me, it doesn't really matter. As far as the acting goes and story, you know, Paul Atreides now, you know, doing his thing and becoming this Messiah-like character and embracing him, you know, transition from being the son of a Duke to being the Duke and losing his father and all these things happening and his transition and falling in love. It's all played out very smooth. You don't feel any one way or the other like this is too slow or there's way more action in this film than was in the second one. The first act, I will say, builds. Um, but I think that the relationship here between Zendaya and Timothy Chalamet, like Shani and Paul, that relationship and the love story that's here is, it feels real. It doesn't feel like it's mushy, right? It doesn't feel like a mushy thing. And they're trying to put this and force this whole relationship thing together for the sake of the audience and for Hollywood purposes. It's actually just really real. I really like it. The only thing I could say is I wish Chani would smile more. She's like, spends half the film angry. Like she spends half the film with a scowl on her face and she's angry. It's like, you know, I, 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 I don't want to give spoilers away, but I just found it interesting that she doesn't smile more. Right? And she's usually like battling her emotions when it comes to stuff. Um, as far as the other performance, Austin Butler, Fade Rafa, holy shit. I, I can just say that. I don't need to get into it. it it's insane. Uh, Christopher Walken as the Emperor. I wish there would have been more of Christopher Walken as the Emperor, but you get what you get. Javier Bardem this time as Stilgar comes back in with a much broader role and much more to say. And it's freaking insane as usual. Dave Bautista does his thing as usual the music once again proving that Hans Zimmer is the man he is the composer of our time he's been my favorite for a very long time he's pretty much my favorite period point blank I think he's the greatest of all time yes I think he takes out John Williams yes Danny Elfman you know these are some of my favorite people uh favorite composers but Hans Zimmer for me and I've been listening to him since Rain Man uh so like Zimmer does his thing once again here. Um, my only complaints with this film would be at the first act, the choppiness here and there. Some scenes kind of just kind of come and go and come and go. And there's some things that are not explained well enough. Uh, I don't want to give spoilers again on this, but just a couple things just seemed like they were out of place or didn't, they weren't really expanded on. Maybe they'll be expanded on at some other point in the third film and there'll be some flashback or something that will explain the things that I feel got left in this one. Yeah, but other than that, there's shit to complain about here. This is what you go to the movies for. This is why you get a ticket. This is why you spend the time to go do it on a Saturday night, Friday night, or at 8.30 in the morning on a Friday. This is what you want to see. This is when you come out and you have nothing to complain about. You know, if you, I can tell you this, if you've not seen Dune 1, you have to see Dune 1. It's like, it's not one of those films where you can be like, oh, I'll just see the second one. You can't do that. I know people do it. I don't know how they do that. Not in this day and age, like it, it seems impossible that you would do that, but just you need to see Dune 1 in order to see this one. I am very much looking forward to the third one. There is a whole thing happening here where this is on the level of Star Wars and that idea of there's a whole nother world, whole other galaxy and all these things happening. And we are just touching the surface because now you've got the way this ends. Again, no spoilers. The way this ends, you've got a whole setup and a whole thing of war coming on. And again, the politics, the religion and all the layers that are built into this outside of the action, outside of the, the obvious sci-fi stuff. It's incredible. Dune part two, go see it if you've not seen it. If you have seen it, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm looking forward to hearing what you say about it. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. I mostly I truly appreciate that. Uh, and I will see you on the next That Guy Talks Movies. Again, Dune part two, go see it. Go see it now.